Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skaldi and today we are going to implement a splash screen from the beginning. We're going to begin by going into 2D and then create a control node. Now I'm going to name this main, because this will be our main scene, the first scene that runs when we play our game. So I'm going to make sure to fit our anchor all the way to the end, as well as put the margin both to zero, so it actually fits the screen, so regardless of the screen size it will fit to the screen. Now it's also important to make sure to turn off stop mouse, because if you wanted to get mouse enter signals or mouse exit or something like that, this, having this on will block the mouse, it, it will prevent the mouse from interacting with anything inside here. Let's press Control S to save or go into scene and select save scene. So I'm going to create a new folder here, I'm going to create a data folder. Now in the data folder I'm going to create our scene, I'm just going to save it as in as a root in our data folder here. So let's hit save, and now let's hit play and make sure to select our main scene, so I won't have to do that later. So the way we are going to do this, we're actually going to take in account for background loading. Meaning, if you had a game with a lot of data you wanted to load early on, perhaps you have a save game or some other data, perhaps you even have a database you want to load in somewhere, I'm going to show you how to take in account for that when you run the splash screen. So on our main node here, I'm going to right click and select Attach script. I'm going to keep the default suggestion for the pattern, hit create. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to create an export variable. It will be a packed scene named next scene. And the reason I create this is so I can later on change this if I wanted to test something. So I may not want to load the splash screen while working on this game. Or perhaps you have your own reasons for changing it later on here. But the point is I can now select the scene from the editor. So let's go back in here. Let's remove the comments inside ready. And let's think about this. What do we want to do? Well, I do want to load data. So let's begin loading data. What else do we want to do? Well, we want to display the splash screen. However, if I were to just add a function now, let's name this um, load data. And then display the splash screen. What would happen is it would run the ready. If we go into load data, it would wait until it has completed and then it will leave and continue downwards. But we don't want that, we want to load it simultaneously with the splash screen. So basically we're gonna start loading, but we also want this to happen at the same time. So the way we're gonna do that is using a thread. So on the top here, we're gonna create a loading thread. And that will be called a uh, onready var loading thread. Equal to thread.new. Then we're gonna copy this. I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna paste it in here, and the way we use it is by writing dot start. And then we enter where we want this to, the, the instance of where the thread will run, and that will be on ourself, on the main. And then the name of the method we want to run, that will be, in our case, load data. And that's all we need. We can optionally add a, uh, you can optionally add data in here. So if you have your own data you want to send to, to this, you can enter, enter it there. But I'm not going to do that, because we don't need that. Let's begin by creating the splash screen. So func, splash screen, and in here, we're gonna print something. Now the reason I'm gonna print is so you can see how it works in the background. So you can see the order of what runs. So the first thing we need to do, we need to create an instance. And that will be the instance of our next scene. So I'm also going to save this, because I want to access this instance from without this. In fact, we want, to end, we want to access the instance from within the loading data. And the reason we do that will become apparent as I write the functions. So let's begin by creating the variable. And that will just be a... Um, let's name this next scene instance. So I'm gonna copy this. And in here, we're gonna enter it. And enter next scene instance. So what's gonna happen is, after you have selected the scene from within the editor, it's gonna create an instance of that scene and store it into our next scene instance. And then we want to add it to the scene. And the way we do that is simply by writing add child and then the name of the next scene instance. Now we need to create the load data function. That will be called func load data. Now it's important to enter a variable here because it, it expects some it expects some data in here. Now you don't need to use it, just make sure you enter vars or something in here, it can be anything really, it's just the name of the variable. So let's uh, let's simulate some loading here, some simulate data loading. Now I'm gonna just create two uh, for loops, so I'm gonna create a for i in range, let's drive from 0, go all the way to 99, something very high, let's see. Yeah, 9 million should 
be enough. Now in that, we're gonna create another 4 looper. So 4J in range 0 to 7. And we're just gonna pass. We're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna iterate through them. And here we're gonna print done loading data. And then we're done for now. So let's take a look at what we've written so far. When we run the game, we're gonna enter here. We're gonna start loading a thread and run load data inside it. And then this is going to work. And while this is working, we're still continuing here. And then we load splash screen. This will happen more or less instantaneously. It's gonna enter load splash screen before this runs. So you can actually see that this actually runs before this is finished. Then we're gonna instance it and then add it to the scene. So let us create our splash screen scene. So I go to scene and new scene. And then we are going to choose another control node because the control node is the best node. It's my favorite node. So let's name this splash screen. I press control S to save. And here I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna name this screens because you may have multiple screens. There's a menu screen, an option screen. There are many screens to choose from, so I just want to keep them all together. Now this is not where you would put levels or um, objects, instances, or no nodes, item nodes, etc. So let's create another folder in here and name this the splash screen and hit save. So what do we want for our splash screen? Let, well, let's make sure we can actually see it when uh, when it, when it appears here. So let's create another shell node and let's choose the color frame. And this will allow us to fill the entire screen with the color. So let's go on the right side here, make anchor points to both the right end and bottom end. And let's go down to margin and put those back to zero. And the reason there is it's zero right now because we forgot to do that on the control. So let's do that there first. So let's set the right control to end and end on both the right and bottom. Let's turn off the stop mouse because we may not want it to stop the mouse. Usually we never want this to stop the mouse. And I'm gonna put zero and zero in both the margins there. Good. But uh, let's change the color a bit. It's a bit too bright for my own tastes here. Let's try something, uh, yeah, it's better. Yeah, let's see what color. I like this color. It's very soothing. Let's rename this to color frame to keep it consistent with our snake case. And let's add a simple label here. So I'm just going to enter splash screen on this here so you can see it. Splash screen. Now you'd add your own thing. You'd have a logo or uh, some sort of, uh, perhaps you would have some credits or company logo, studio logo. Now what you want to put is really up to you. And then we're going to create an animation player here. Let's name this Anim Player. So the way we're going to handle fading, we're actually going to use Animation Player to handle both the fade in and fade out. There's no need to be do anything fancy. Let's select the paper here. Let's name this Fade In Out. Hit OK. And let's make this a bit longer, because we, we probably want to see the splash screen for a little while. So let's say it takes one second to fade in. One, two, three, a couple of seconds more to view it, and then one second to fade out. So let's enter, uh, let's try uh, seven seconds maybe. So let's go to zero here. Now select the splash screen and navigate to opacity. It should be right here. And make sure it starts at zero. Hit the key here. Hit create to edit in here. Let's move the red line to one. Let's enter opacity one as well. And let's do the same at the end here. So on six seconds, we're gonna hit the key again. And lastly on seven, we're gonna enter zero and then hit the key. So now we have four keyframes in here. So if I were to go back to the start now and hit play, you'll see it fades in and it stays there for a little while, so you can actually, you know, take that in. <laughs> and then it fades out. Okay, I, I like this. This is good. So I'm gonna hit auto play here, so it starts when you run this, or rather when you load this. So if I were to hit this now, you should see that it fades in, and it takes a couple of seconds, and it fades out slowly. Now it's up to you to manage your own background. For example, the way this works, the way we're gonna set this up, this will be the initial background. So if you have, for example, a, um, a scenery or something, you would add it in under main here. Or, optionally, you could add another control node inside the first one, and then set the animation to that sub-control node, so you, you won't interfere with the background when you fade in and out. But that is all up to you. I'm just showing you the tools here. So let's right-click the splash screen and let's create a script here. And hit create. Let's remove the comments, and let's do the same thing as we did in the other script. We're gonna get the uh, export packed scene var next scene, and this will determine which scene we will enter after the splash screen has ended. What else? Well, let's get a reference to the animation player, because we want to know when it's done playing. So on ready var anim player equals get node anim player. And then we want a variable to determine whether or not we are done loading. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna create a boolean. So by default, we are going to set is loading to true. Because when this starts, we already began loading something. And we want the main 
to inform the next scene instance when we're done loading. And the way we're going to do that is at the end of load data, we are going to use the instance and is loading set to false. So at the end of our loading, we are just going to set it to false. Okay, I've taken some time to comment both the scripts here. So I, I won't waste your time, so I skipped ahead here. So inside ready, we are going to enable user input because we may want to cancel this splash screen or skip ahead. You may or may not want that, so that's really up to you. But I'm going to include it in this video tutorial here. So if you do want to skip it, well, you can do so. So let's enable user input. Let's set process input to true. And then we are going to run the animation. Fade in out. Now I'm going to create this method right underneath here. And this is quite straightforward. In here, we are going to play anim player play fade in out. And this is the name of the animation itself. So if you have a different name, you'd enter a different name here. And then we're going to set up a signal so we know when it's done. So on finished, we are going to run a method on ourselves. And that method name will be go to next scene. Okay, let's create that. Funk go to next scene. So if we are still loading when the splash screen anim is done, we try to load next scene every second. Now the, the reason we're going to do this is because you may not want to be able to skip the splash screen until the loading is complete. Now if you don't care about that and you have completely separate data that is not at all relevant to the next scene, you can skip this part. But I'm going to include it because chances are you may want to wait until the data is finished loading. We're going to use that little boolean on top here, is loading. So if that is true and we are loading at the moment, our fit in and fade out animation is done, we are going to enable, we're going to use a timer. Now timer will be equal to timer.new. We have to make sure to add it as a child because otherwise it won't do anything. Let's wait for one second. So let's set wait time to one. Now the reason I'm setting the wait time to one is it's just for convenience. We don't want it to loop too quickly. That's a, that's a waste of resources. So timer set one shot to false because we don't want it to loop. Now I believe this is the default so you may not need to do this. But I'm gonna add it there for uh, clarity. And then we are gonna connect because we want to know when it's done. When it has timed out. And then we're gonna run a function on ourselves, and that function will be simply next scene. And lastly, we need to start a timer. What if we're not loading when it's done playing the animation? Well, then we want to start immediately. In which case, just run next scene. And let's fix this type on top of here. And let's create our next scene. So underneath here, we're gonna create another function, and that'll be func next scene. However, if we want the user to be able to skip ahead. We want to make sure it can't skip until the loading is done. So the way I do that is simply by using if is loading is false. So basically, if you were to try to run this while we are loading, then nothing is going to happen here. It's just going to do nothing. So let's print. We are now loading the next scene from the splash screen. So get parent. And the reason I'm using get parent is because we don't want to add the next scene as a child of our splash screen. We want to do be a child of the main scene. So I'm going to use get parent to get main and then add a child there. And that child will be our next scene as an instance. Now we can put this in directly in here because we don't need to interact. We don't need to send any information to the next scene from our splash screen. And then we queue free, which will terminate our own splash screen. So what is going to happen now is on our main script, we are going to load data. Then we're going to display the splash screen that is added to our main scene. Then we go in here. We enable input, which we are going to write. We haven't done that yet, but we'll get to it. And then we run the animation. So if we don't press anything to skip, we are going to fade in and out. And when the animation is finished, we are going to run go to next scene. However, if loading is still in progress, we are going to create a timer and add it to the splash screen. And every one second, we will attempt to load the next scene. So while our loading is true, we are going to try and try and try until this happens. And then we are simply going to create the next scene as a child of our parent and then destroy ourselves. You don't have to do anything else with the timer. But we will need to create a next scene because currently we don't have a next scene for this. I'm just going to create a dummy main menu here. I'm just going to use a 2D. In here, I'm going to get the label. And I'm going to enter, this is the main menu. Now this is not a part of this tutorial, but I may create a uh, continuation of this in the future. 
but we'll see. I'm gonna save this. Let's create a new folder and name this the main menu screen. So let's create a background for this color frame. I'm gonna make sure this is on top of label. You can right click and select move up or press control up to do that. Let's make sure to just drag it to the side. Let's make it sure that we can actually fill the screen. Now, because I'm not using control node, I cannot use the anchor points here. But this is just a quick test. I'm just gonna change the color so we can see it here. There we go. Press control S to save and let's go back to our splash screen. Let's select the main menu right here. So load, data, screens, main menu screen and select it. Then we're gonna select main and do the same here. And this will be our splash screen. So we're jumping from main to splash screen to main menu screen, which is replacing the splash screen. So let's hit play. Now it fades in. Now it says data is not finished loading yet. And now it waits. We're still waiting. And it's still loading and there's the main menu. So, we know that works now. So let's now implement the last part, which is allowing you to skip the splash screen if the load has completed. Underneath ready here, we're gonna create the input function. And in here, we're gonna check if event dot is action pressed, and the name of that is UI select. Now this is just a space bar. Then we're going to go to the next scene. And that's all we need. Because the next scene will not load as long as we're loading, we can this works fine. We don't need to do anything else here. So let's try it again and let's uh, hit play. Now it's not gonna work. I'm pressing space right now. Nothing is going to work. And the animation is going to finish before the data is done loading. So we won't be able to test it. So let's now reduce the data here. Let's make sure this uh, finished earlier here. I'm just gonna comment this out. So this is gonna happen more or less instant now. So let's hit play. Let's hit space. And there's the main menu. And one last thing that's worth mentioning while using threads. If you wanted to completely replace the main screen, you would have to enter loading thread wait to finish. And this will join the threads back to the thread. So basically, this is going to run and then this is going to run. However, we're not going to end this. This, this Q3 line is not going to run until we're done loading our data. So it's just going to stop here and wait until the thread is done loading. The source code will be in the description below, so you're more than welcome to download it and try it for yourself. So thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.